Although news changes daily and even hourly, it is still the greatest constant in television's past 35 years. Every channel every night has featured their news. While some things in news have remained unchanged, like the quest for accuracy, over 35 years some things have definitely changed, such as the speed with which we can now bring you stories. That's because the demand for instant information has pushed technology from valves to microchips. When the coaxial cable was laid between Sydney and Melbourne, at last the cities were linked and we thought we were as modern as tomorrow. Now we can get the news to you at this speed of light. Satellites have made literally the world of difference to the news. Not only have they influenced how quickly stories come to you, but also satellites have enabled us to get stories from all parts of the world. Maybe you've forgotten how we used to view world events. First Battalion has gone through three commanders in six months, wounded in battle or relieved of command. Major Robert Thompson took over 17 days ago. We've almost uh, completely negated any uh, close artillery or mortar support and to, uh, excuse me, and to uh, push the troops on down uh, without the support would be uh, very difficult. Now that was our early version of satellite reporting and it was satellited from Vietnam to America. Then they transferred the material to film, packed it up and flew it out to Australia. You got the news all right a week later. But move on to a report on the crushing of protest in China by Max Utrich. These tanks have just provided an escort for about 30 troop trucks which have come into Tiananmen Square from the east of the city. The cannon are covered with cloth, but as usual there's been sporadic machine gun fire. Only one brave protester dared resist the tanks, incredibly clambering aboard and remonstrating with the crew of the lead tank. Now that report made it to our screens within 24 hours, a quantum leap in conflict reporting. So what could we have left? What could television news do next to amaze and to some extent terrify us? It had Operation Desert Storm, the war you could watch live from your lounge room. Uh, the air raid sirens are just now going off here near these U.S. bases in Saudi Arabia. We've sent the entire camera crews inside right now. We're being told to get off this platform and get inside into the air raid shelter immediately. But right now, everyone's been training for this, and uh, it looks like we may have to... All right, Charles Jaco, that doesn't mean that he is in any imminent danger, of course. But even with the latest technology, bringing back the news is never easy. That's especially true within Australia. The harsh nature of the country itself has provided some unforgettable stories. And then, of course, there are equally outstanding stories of man's making. What I always remember most is not just the events, not just the courage of the survivors, but the overriding spirit within the stories. The strength, the courage that is Australia. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Unforgettable. Though near or far. Like a song of love that clings to me, how the thought of you... We thought it was the end. I did anyway. I thought, well, this is the end. We won't get over this. Never before has someone... You've been a good old friend. A good old dog. There's a bit more than I can touch. In every way. One young policeman was working in the rubble, uh, trying to find survivors when he was told that his brother was on that train. Luckily, he was in hospital. He's alive. I don't know what it is. I thought it was the second coming. Unforgettable. Fireball would right over the top of us and just there cooked us. And forevermore, that's how. Kill one of the 150 coming to the funeral. That's what. Carol. It's incredible that someone 
so unforgettable. By tonight, locals say the whole town of Ningen will be submerged. I'm not ashamed to admit it, I came home and cried. Unforgettable to Certainly unforgettable, all of them and many more. Television news has become an archive of our time. When we think of the events, we remember the news images. Some images from major stories are so dominant, they become where were you then events. Do you remember where you were in 1963, the day that President John F. Kennedy was shot? It was perhaps the beginning of modern day terrorism and these eerie images bring it all back. And what do you think caused this crowd in 69? All too strange, they were all of it. Very emotional, inside. It was just something beyond comprehension. I hope he gets back, you know, safe. I hope he gets, you know, finds all the things he needs. You guessed it, they were watching the moon and man's first landing. I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. What do you think about a man going to the moon? Well, I don't think he's got any business up there. Well, you can't please everyone, and here's an example of one of those rare stories that grew into a decade of news, though none of us realised it then. The year is 1980. The parents of Azaria Chamberlain have now left Ayers Rock to return to their Mount Isa Seventh-day Adventist church and they've accepted that their ten-week-old baby is probably dead. I just yelled, I, there wasn't time to go and tell people, I just yelled out, has anyone got a torch? The has got my baby. And finally, a more recent Where Were You Then event that stopped Australia. Do you remember your feelings of pride and happiness that day in September 1983? I'm sure the next man does. But as I say, we're going to be a nation of zombies, we might as well declare it a national holiday anyway. <laughs> I tell you what, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up today is a bum. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, the news can make you feel good. In the next 35 years, undoubtedly the news gathering technology will change, but still the basics of news will remain. Bringing it to you quickly and accurately, the way it is.